close pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now a carry for Mack. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a first down on a gain of 10. That's good. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. On first down, they'll stay with Mac on the ground. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A gain of a yard brings up second and nine. That's the end of the third quarter. And they won't be able to run another play. Time has expired on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and nine, Rivers fighting Hilton on the slant. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 18. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Hines. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Sean, this has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive took a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settled things down a little bit. The Colts on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This will be third and six. They'll toss this right side to Mack. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. You have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. Field goal. A 31-yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. Makes the score. Colts 27. Buccaneers 24. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. 
And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. A few better down a score in the fourth quarter than Tom Brady. This is first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Second and six. Operating from the gun. Brady, a quick pass here to Godwin. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Back to back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. On first down, Brady. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Into the red zone, it's Brady. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll make it a second down. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. This is caught, Gronkowski. And the Buccaneers are gonna have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Brady on target to Gronk, first down Buccaneers. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bucs have taken the lead. Now he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. Extra point try now for Suckup. And that will make this a four-point game. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run.
And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Rodgers on the return. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Colts take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Rivers and the Colts going to come up first and 10 at their own 27. He'll throw from the gun. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. A play fake to Mack, now Rivers. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked up by Levante David. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Suck up for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Colts take over first and 10 at their own 21. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. We'll see if they can band back together after the pick six. It hurt badly, but still within striking distance. A two-score game with a good chunk of time on the clock. Rivers going to bring the Colts up first and 10 at their own 21. Back to it after the pick six. Rivers, a good throw here, finding Pascal. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. It's a gain of nine. They need a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. That's into the hands of Pascal. And he'll be out of bounds, 
been able to get it up past the 45. 16 yards, a first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. To back good plays, have them on the move on first down. From the gun, Rivers out of his hands quickly to Pittman. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? A first down throw here for Rivers. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Mike, five, four, Mike, five, four. Mike, five, Another try after the first down sack. Rivers, he's got Jack Doyle. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. Complete and that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are gonna happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first and ten, Rivers. The toss here completed to Pittman. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. And passing yardage wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Back to back, nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw through three corners, no reason to lighten up now. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Looking to run with Mack, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Taking it in from two yards out, and the Colts have got it back to a one-score game. He had the option to hand that football off. I think it's safe to say that he made the right decision. That was a heck of a run. It certainly was, and when you mentioned the option, most people think the quarterback's not going to keep the ball. You know, in the NFL, that's usually not the recipe for being around too long. So when you do keep it, it often surprises the heck out of a defense. So here we go. The Colts will go for two. Working out of the gun, Rivers. 
And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. Rigoberto Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Taken in at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Bucs take over first and 10 at their own 28 yard line. The Bucs ready to take over once again. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Brown. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Second and two. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word, put it in bold. Here we go. on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. Here it's third and three. And to give this time to the tailback. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. That's taken on the 25. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Colts getting another possession here on offense. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth-quarter lead. Rivers and the Colts going to come up first and 10 right at the 30. He'll set up to throw. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. I think you have to chalk that one up for the defense there. Someone right on the spot. Excellent coverage. Didn't leave him enough room to come down inbounds, even though he did catch the football. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and 10. To throw again. Rivers. 
Middle of the field to the tight end, Doyle. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Five yards. Now it's third and five. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Rivers from the gun on third down. And he's got his man, Hilton. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. First down. Middle of the field, he finds Pascal. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 13 yard gain yet again, just like last play. First down. First and 10 at the 38 yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And he can't get a throw. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Vita Vea in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Now the Colts moving quickly here in the hurry-up offense. Back to throw. The pass underneath. Here's Hines with it. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. there as it's intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it, and the return stops at the 39-yard line. And that one, oh, it's going to hurt big time. You're in the two-minute drill, trying to get your guys down the field, and it's looking like they're going to come up just short, as this is definitely not his best throw, and it'll wind up being intercepted. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. And this one now not quite over yet. Still two timeouts remaining defensively. And boy, having that third timeout would have really helped here. Yeah, another example of why coaches really stress saving your timeouts for when you absolutely have to have them. They go over this all the time. Here's one of those situations. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as he'll get it with still a minute 20 left to go in the game. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Brady to throw. 
And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So fire the cannons. It's a victory here for Tampa Bay. And they were really helped by their defense, forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, Pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... But now, it's about taking the ball away. Taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from Indy.